A boy vanished from a shopping mall. Then the cops discover a 10-year-old sick game. But before we start, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss an upload from us. Also, leave a like right now. We've all heard the phrase, boys will be boys, in reference to young boys getting into trouble. While kids often get into mischief from time to time, they're usually still good kids. However, what happens when the child is actually rotten to the core? When these two boys skipped class one day, they would show the world what it was like to stare into the faces of pure evil. It was a cold Friday afternoon at the Strand Shopping Center in Liverpool. The shopping center was bustling with shoppers, yet something was amiss. Two 10-year-old boys playing hooky from school seemed to continue to draw attention to themselves. How did they manage to get out of school for the day? The two boys were the perfect definition of good boys gone bad. Throughout the day, they shoplifted from multiple stores with batteries and some paint being a bulk of their loot. While on the surface, it seemed like two young boys getting into trouble. The truth was much more sinister. Meanwhile, on the other side of the shopping center, Denise, a young mother, and her two-year-old son James were spending the day shopping with her brother's fiance and child. With two children and lots of shopping to do, Denise found it difficult to watch James at every moment. Even worse, James was beginning to get restless running from store to store. Unbeknownst to both of them, they were being watched from a distance. As Denise spoke with a butcher in an effort to purchase a cut of beef for her husband's dinner, she had no idea that her son James had caught the attention of the two boys in the mall. They watched as James walked around, trailing his mother. Realizing Denise was distracted, the boys decided to approach the young James. The two boys stealthily approached James while Denise had her back turned. They began to chat with him, gaining his trust enough for them to lead him by the hand out of the store. It took only a moment and he was gone. When Denise turned around, her son was nowhere in sight. The two 10-year-old boys, identified as Robert Thompson and John Venables, took the young James on a two and a half mile walk from Liverpool to Leeds and then to the Liverpool Canal. Despite a good amount of people noticing the boys, no one thought anything was wrong. To the innocent observer, it seemed like three young boys out for an innocent stroll. Unfortunately, things were about to take a very dark turn. The boys began to taunt James when they reached the edge of the canal. They threatened to throw him into the water so he would drown. One of the boys then picked the poor innocent James up and slammed him to the ground head first, injuring him in the process. As a lump began to form on James's head, the boys decided to take the abuse one step further. By this time, little James was crying uncontrollably. Some bystanders took notice, but both Robert and John were able to shoo them off with a lie. At first, the boys took James by a police station and actually discussed leaving him there. However, they decided against it and led the injured James to a nearby railway station. What happens next is so horrific, you might not be able to stomach it. After the boys reached the railroad tracks, they forced James to strip naked. They then splashed the paint they had stolen into his eyes and forced him to choke on some batteries as well. At this point, James was hysterical and Robert and John knew they had to shut him up. Their next decision would haunt them for the rest of their lives. Displaying a level of brutality almost unheard of for boys their age, the boys kicked, hit, and stomped on the defenseless James. They hurled rocks and bricks at the little boy and then found a 22-pound railway fish plate. What happens next is chilling. The boys raised the fist plate over James's head and let go. The impact from the fish plate cracked the little boy's skull in over 10 places, killing him instantly. Robert and John then weighed down the boy's body on the railroad tracks, hoping a train would come by and make the murder look like an accident. Unfortunately for them, this was only the beginning of their problems. 
At first, it seemed Robert and John's plan worked. James's body was struck by a train and split in two. Two days after his murder, a group of young boys would wander upon the body, thinking it was a broken doll. When they realized it was a corpse, they immediately rushed to the nearby police station. Would justice be found for little James? The police immediately launched an investigation into the unprecedented murder of James, performing an autopsy that revealed he had died before being struck by a train. This was due to the fact that James's body had over 42 injuries in total. In fact, his body was so badly damaged, there wasn't one injury that could have been determined as the fatal blow. Thankfully, the police had plenty of evidence to provide leads in James's case. The security footage at the Strand Shopping Center was the most damning and revealed that the two young boys had taken James from the shopping center. The police were completely shocked, revealing that the brutal extent of the injuries would never have led them to guess it was a child who inflicted them. With the footage of the boys found, the police were one step away from finding out their identities. The police released the images of Robert and John on national television, which led one woman to identify John. She knew he had been playing hooky from school that day and quickly contacted the police. It wouldn't take long for the boys to be swiftly arrested. Even though both Robert and John were only 10 years old, the horrific nature of their crime led the court to try them as adults. With all of the evidence piled against them, the boys were found guilty and sentenced to life in prison, although they would have possibility for parole at the age of 18. Unfortunately for James's family and his mother Denise, both John and Robert were granted parole eight years later. Due to the high risk of retaliation against them both, the now young men were given new identities. It seems totally unfair, right? Over the years, John would commit several more crimes involving children that would land him back behind bars. The whereabouts of Robert are unknown due to the witness protection program he was enrolled in. It seems so unfair that little James lost his life so soon, especially at the hands of two young bullies who should have been in school. We can only take the solace in the fact that justice was indeed served, although it will never bring Denise her little boy back.